Hi everyone. Uh, can someone give me a thumbs up or raise your hand if you can hear me? Oh, perfect. Thank you. Good. Great. I think this meeting is recorded. Um, so just to keep that in mind and um, we're just shy of six o'clock. So I'll give it a minute and then get started. Cool. Well, in the interest of your time, um, I will go ahead and get started and know that if any of this is confusing or you want to come back to it, it's recorded and I will send it out to you. So um, welcome. Thanks for coming. I'm Tammy Lindberg, uh, the uh, Lower Adolescent Program Director. And we're here to talk today about um, the theater intensive that's just beginning on Monday. Things are a little fuzzy at this point in my brain, so bear with me. Um, it is just for seventh and eighth grade students to kind of complete what we used to call J-term. And um, the last two years have afforded us the ability to reflect and refine how we do this practice. So um, I don't think there's any ninth grade families here but this is just for seventh and eighth grade students. So it's actually a pretty quick slide deck. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them into um, the Q&A box or the chat, and I'll do my best to answer them as we go. So here we go. I'm gonna do this version so I can see my notes that I put in the bottom. Um, so we're here to talk about the 2021-22 theater intensives, and we are doing a rendition of the Snow Queen, so we'll talk more about that. But I first wanted to say a bit about why we do um, a theater intensive or a J-term. And, you know, Maria Montessori writes uh, that the opening up of ways of expression through exercise, um, through exercises and external aids will help this difficult development of the personality. And she's talking about the adolescent development um, in her book, Childhood to Adolescent. Um, so what she means is that it's a beautiful, adolescence is a beautiful time of intense growth consciousness of self that the student did not have in upper elementary where they're focused more on cosmic education and this big imaginative world that's out there. And the development of social awareness comes in heavy during this third plane of development. Um, and the theater intensive offers students this beautiful opportunity to have a time of intense growth self-awareness and social development, um, all behind a sort of mask or acting through a different person. So you get to try on these roles, um, go out of your comfort zone and try new things, but it's not so socially difficult because you're acting, you're a different person. Um, so it's, it's pretty amazing. The challenge, of course, is to get on stage and to, to either have a really big role or a small role or just a non-speaking role. Those are challenging for every student um, at different levels. The addition of all of the props and costumes is also a challenge. So the executive functioning piece that we talk about so often in the lower adolescent is really put to the test with real consequences here. Um, they're developing their self-confidence on stage in front of us every single day, beginning to become aware of their talents and their adaptations to all of these different new challenges and their self-expression. <coughs> they're beginning to work on themselves at this level where they don't really know they're working on themselves. For students 
aren't really thinking, oh, I'm developing my ability to act or do art right now. Um, and it's in tandem with people, with their socialness and their peers and their conversations with the responsibilities that come with a play. So uh, if you didn't get the tickets out on time, people can't buy them the t-shirts or the props aren't ready on showtime, we have a big consequence there. So um, it is pretty, pretty real. Uh, Lori York Crocker, one of my Montessori trainers says, it is through the avenues of self-expression that the adolescents test their identity and their values, their gifts and abilities. And um, she goes on to say that through creative work and the work of the imagination, they try out their perceptions of who they might be or become against the perceptions of the world. And through art, music, writing, drama, and dance, they try out roles and process their emotions, clarify their ideas, invent and reinvent themselves. So thinking back to maybe if you're a student, you are already thinking to today when you might have experienced some of this, or as adults, we can remember what our middle school experience was like and how much we were experimenting with ourselves and who we were and the idea and our identity. So that is why we do J term. It is, or theater intensive. It's pretty amazing. Kind of like watch it all happen in front of you. So what are students responsible for in the old J terms and the new uh, rebranding of a theater intensive? They're responsible for the acting, the, the programs in front of house types of things, all of the props, whether they're big wooden architectural structures or cardboard um, uh, comic drawings, which was a few years ago, um, the costumes, the tickets, the hairstyles, the makeups, all of that, the students are responsible for. And this is why we went to the smaller groups, not as much because of COVID that does play a role, but um, these smaller groups of just 40 students throughout the year in three different groups enables the guides to not have to hold so much because we're not responsible for so many students getting so much done. And the room for error is a little bit more forgiving when we have these smaller groups with the same amount of time. So, um, it's still very busy and still very much a pressure cooker sometimes, but these smaller groups enable students to take ownership of these all these different projects. And they'll do that through these choice projects that they will kind of choose at the beginning of the month and be um, working on throughout the month. And of course the culmination happens at the end. Um, so. Pretty amazing to watch it all come together. It sort of starts off very strong. It's a lull and you think it's never gonna come together. And then all of a sudden it comes together and um, it's everyone's very proud of themselves and very valorizing, which is that Montessori term. Um, they of course still have daily math and daily reading and the afternoon creative expression. What they don't have is CAS. So we use their CAS on Wednesday afternoons for those rehearsals. And maybe even um, some of those choice projects and props and things like that. We have a brand new play that has never existed before. Um, our two directors and writers are Tyler Olson Hines. Um, he is a familiar name and runs or directs um, Victoria Theater right now, also Dangerous Productions, has been working with Great River School, I think for the past five or six years. And um, you can read his bio, but loves to direct middle school. And um, one as one of the writers with Samukta, um, you can see it in their writing. Their writing is, um, so beautiful. It <laughs> incorporates our place. You'll hear 
that it is rooted in St. Paul in the Frogtown neighborhood. Um, you'll see and hear the adolescent humor and also the developmental period and things that they're going through right now. And it brings up a bunch of social justice issues of our time. So it is a really amazing play that has been adapted from Hans Christian Andersen. And um, these two writers have taken a, a much different approach to it. So you can read both their um, bios here. And Samusa is brand new to us at Great River, but um, proving to be a, a very amazing writer. Um, and that is, uh, I think, maybe the least of it. You can read more. She's really amazing and quite impressive that we have secured these two brilliant writers and directors for Great River. Um, so they wrote this play and really we're thinking from the get-go that we would do the play in three parts in three smaller groups. And we wanted to make sure to keep you, the audience members coming back for more. So we really wanted to have a play that the first group does their, um, the word is gone, um, interpretation of. The second part, the second group does their interpretation, but it builds on the first and so on for the third. So it's different groups of students uh, interpreting the play and acting out the play in different ways. Um, they, the dates, are, oh, we don't need to know your auditions. Um, the dates of the productions are here. And I'll show you a little bit later on where your student is. If you don't know that yet, they already know. And when the, the sort of term for the theater intensive starts. So mark these dates on your calendar. And so we often have to have changes to our schedules because the Thursday and Friday of the production, um, the production is at six o'clock at night so that you all um, could have a better opportunity to see it. We have dress rehearsals on Wednesdays, uh, the Wednesday before the production. And then the Thursday and Friday, we don't want the students to be at school for full 12 hours. So we're asking that the students come at 12 p.m and leave after the production wraps up around, oh, this is totally wrong, um, 6.45. Um, so they will have about a eight, a seven or eight hour day, which is plenty during these stressful days. Um, you might be wondering about dinner there and Thursday and Friday of the productions uh, families and caregivers and aunties and grandmas and uncles and you know whoever um, bring in a potluck dinner that night and it's a really cherished part of the event because you all it's your last moment to sort of say good luck to your students it's really really cute um, and it's also delicious <laughs> So this, you'll be able to see when I send it out, if you click right here, is when your student is going. So this is theater one, theater intensive group one, group two, and the dates are at the top, and group three with the dates at the top again. Uh, so check that out, mark calendars. We've got some resources. So Scott, Tracy, and I, are leading the first theater intensive one. And we'll send out more information for you second and third when we get there. Um, so reaching out to us for anything you might need is the best place to go. Um, the most sort of direct place. And last slide, how can you help? So the sign up genus is coming. Um, Heather Thomas and I met last night to get some help from the parent engagement group. So thank you to all of you in the parent engagement group and to everyone who helps um, and contributes. 
So I will stop sharing and check out any question and answers, which there are none. So if you have any questions, drop them in there. And that's great. And maybe <laughs> I answered everybody's question already. Or of course, if you come up with questions um, after the fact, you can always email in. The quickest presentation I think I've ever done. <laughs> so usually um, we are meeting in person and we have an opportunity to meet Tyler. And this meeting is for either the students or the parents. So welcome if you're a student. And yeah, we're gonna make sure and videotape um, the acts and send them out in case you miss them. And with our COVID protocols, there won't be enough for everyone in the community to come see it in person. So we'll definitely be sending it out. We, depending on the different amounts of COVID in our state or region, um, it determines how many people can come into our theater. So um, we'll send more information out about that as we get closer to the production date. Maybe one to two weeks ahead of time, we'll be selling tickets because at this point, we're not sure where we're gonna land in a few weeks. This next, um, uh, theater intensive begins on Monday the 22nd, as many of the quarters changes, so. And yes, if you're, one of the questions is, will one of the families, will the families with students in that act get ticket preference? Yes, yep, you do, of course. Um, that, would, that would be so sad <laughs> if you couldn't see your own student. So yes, ticket preference will go there and then we'll open it up to sort of like the general population. Yeah. Thank you for your questions. It is a pretty straightforward key experience. Um, it's one of our three and um, it enables the students to sort of dive in on their own thoughts. Um, children are able to miss any day, miss days during their intensive. But if you're going on like a week long or a couple day long vacation, that will make it hard for your students. So if that is your, if you're wondering about that, let's make sure we chat. Mm. <laughs> I like the last one in the chat for sure. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah. I, I will, um, I'm surprised it only took 17 minutes. It's probably because <laughs> this is straightforward and I've been thinking about it for weeks and weeks on end. So if you guys, if I missed anything, um, feel free to email in. And when I send this out, I'll answer, I'll put all those questions that come in in the email so that you also don't miss those questions. And thank you for spending your Tuesday night with me. And uh, I, I'll remind people, tomorrow's a half day. Uh, you're, the students are done with school at 1145. And then Wednesday through Friday of next week is fall break. So um, no school those days. Here we go. And I know teachers and students alike are grateful for this half day tomorrow. So thank you to all of you families that are doing whatever you have to do um, to make this possible. Um, it is a time for guides to get together and talk about things that are working and things that need to be improved and how we can help students during this really tricky time. Um, that's really hard for everybody, families, students and teachers and administrators alike. So uh, thank you for 
everything you're doing to make this possible and all of your support. I will stick around for a little bit, but feel free to sign off if you have no further questions and know that I'll email out any other questions that should come in. <coughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Miriam, if you're still here, I'm just seeing your question. Um, the students not in theater intensive do have a regular schedule. Uh, they'll get their schedule, I think on Thursday. So they'll have a piece of paper that tells them their schedule. And auditions have already happened for this current theater intensive. And the next one are tentatively scheduled for December 1st for that second round. But I just wanna check a few things, make sure I'm right before I publish that date for sure. Well, cool. thanks, y'all. I'm going to sign off and thanks for sharing your evening with me.